guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Guillaume and I'm a filmmaker based on the Gold Coast, Australia. So today we are going to cover the topic of speed control within Final Cut Pro 10. So I already started and put together for you guys a quick timeline with a few clips all shot in slow motion of my friend Lakeland Ford, aka Loki Z. If you want to give him a photo, he's got some dope wakeboarding. He's a very, very talented wakeboarder. So the timeline is made of a few clips here. Those were filmed on the red Gemini at different frame rates. And we as well have at the end a few clips shot on the GoPro Hero 7. So the first thing we want to do if you don't know what a frame rate you shot at is to go here on the upper menu and directly click on the small eye icon here at the top. It's going to give you a bunch of information. If you don't see all of this, if you just have the basic mode, you won't see much. So make sure you click here on general or extended. At the very top here, we've got our frame size. So this clip was shot in 5K and right now it's playing back at 23.98, so 24 frames a second. But what you really want to look at is here at the bottom, the video frame rate we've got here and the shooting rate. The reason why I say that is if you go on a GoPro clip, everything that's below 60 frames a second is going to show correct here. So here that clip was shot in 2.7K at 60 frames a second. Here we've got the video frame rate. The difference with the GoPro and the RED here, the RED was filming in, for example, 120 frames a second. However, it was confirmed to a 24p directly within the camera, whereas the GoPro is recording at 60 frames a second and plays back right now at 60 frames a second. One of the reasons why you shouldn't always look at the information at the top here is when you have ultra slow-mo clips like this one. That one was shot in full HD and here it says 60p, but this is not true. The correct value is 240 frames per second. For some reason, Final Cut doesn't show it here. And similarly than before, uh, the clip is played by it directly in real time. If you watch this clip, you are watching 240 frames per second. So let's get started. And I'm going to start by uh, changing the speed of some GoPro clips. So let's select this one. I'm going to play it back to show you. It's a failed inside by side nine. So basically one option is to click on this small icon here and you've got a few options. So uh, to come back to the settings of the clip, this one was shot in 4K at 60 frames a second. Theoretically, we are right now in the 24p timeline. You need as well to set up your timeline. So if I go into my timeline settings, I'm going to uh, click right now. You saw me clicking on the shortcut, but that's this icon here at the top, click on your project and you can see the project details right now. It's uh, in 4K timeline at 24. Uh, you can change that here. So one thing with Final Cut is once you've created your project, you can't change the frame rate. You can change the size if you need to, but you can't change your frame rate. One way of going around that is to create a new project. If you wanted to play it back at 60p, you can create a new project. Just press Command N and here when you set the parameters, you can change and uh, have up to a 60p. For some uh, users like uh, gamers, they will want to use uh, this option. So our timeline is 24p and we want to conform our clip which is 60 to 24 so divided by 60 and that's giving us 0.4 which corresponds to 40%. So now that I have my clip selected and we are going to slow it down to 40% the best way to do so is to click on the small icon here and go on to custom and we are going to enter manually the speed 40%. At the same time you saw that when I did that you see that small green bar at the top I'm just going to zoom in to show you. But basically, that green bar shows us the speed of the clip. So I'm going to put 40% and press enter. Here we go. Now we've got a clip slowed down to 40%, which is now playing by 24 frames per second for 24 timeline that looks much much cooler this is one way of doing it if I go on to the next clip I'm going to show you another way of doing so so I've selected the next clip and now I'm going to select the shortcut command R which is showing up this same top bar when the bar is green it means my speed is set to the normal speed of the original clip if I slow it down so let's say I'm going to use those presets here by 50%. The bar is going to turn orange. And if I make the clip play back faster, the bar is going to turn blue. So it's just to give you very quick visual. So we can do exactly the same thing and grab our 
calculator, we are going to take our 24p timeline and have our clip, which is a 240 frames per second click, the target speed, which is 10%. Similarly, we could go here, click on custom. Another way of doing it is going to click on this small down arrow here, custom, right. press enter. Now we've got our clip at 10%. Or I can go on slow here. I've got a preset of 10%. This is doing it as well. And another way that I found out, I don't know if it was there before, but on the latest update of Final Cut Pro, if you click on that icon here and you click on automatic speed, Final Cut Pro is going to convert your clip to the timeline speed for you. So here it knows that it needs to go to 10%. Another way of doing so is to take our clip and click on this small black bar. Make sure you are not selecting the end of the clip because that's going to extend or shorten your clip, but you want to click on that small bar and see how my mass icon changes. I'm going to click and drag it to the right. If I want to slow down the clip, I can go all the way to 10% manually or I can go the opposite way and make it faster. It's going to be very useful if you want to adjust the length of your clip, but you want still your in point, so your starting point and your end point to do the same. But let's say you are synchronizing the clip on the music. You just need that clip to last a few frames. You could extend it slightly and have the exact length you are looking for. So I'm just going to show you the clip now because 240 frames per second is absolutely epic. But basically our clip is now 33 seconds while before it was only three seconds. So it's very, very trippy. So now that you know how to control the speed of a wall clip, what if you want to control the speed just of one portion of the clip? I'm going to play back the clip and um, you'll understand a bit better what I want to do to this one. So it's jumping on the pipe and directly coming down. It goes very quick and you can see the clip here is nearly five seconds. This one was shot as well in 60p. We can slow that clip down to 40%. Let's say we want to have only the part where it is on the pipe slow and the rest at real speed. So you've got a few methods to do that. So basically you want to use the blade tool. So press B. I want from the moment it touches. So here and it's going to end just when it takes off. Now I've cut my clip into three parts. I'm going to control the speed just on that middle part and keep the rest at real speed. Command R to pull my shortcut and we are going to slow it down to 40%, press enter. And now if you play it back. So that's a one way of doing it and it's pretty cool. You can always adjust a bit the speed of the clip individually. You could even change a bit the speed and have it faster at the beginning and faster at the end. But I'm not a huge fan and we can do a lot better. So I'm going to jump onto the next clip and let's play it back just to have a look. For this one, I'm going to use another method. We are going to just cut the speed. So we are going to use a similar tool than the blade tool, but just for the speed. So you can pull this one directly from this menu and it's called blade speed. You want to make sure your play head is exactly where you want to blade the speed. But basically I want it to be as it takes off here. Let's make sure I'm at the right spot and I'm going to click on blade speed. Here you can see I haven't cut the clip, but I have created a cut in the speed. I'm going to cut the speed again. And this time I'm going to use the shortcut shift B and that's going to play back your speed. And here one is totally rewind I'm going to slow that down again and see I'm not changing the speed yet we'll do that a bit after and when it lands we'll slow it down so I've done quite a lot of cuts and if I play it back right now it's not going to change anything because I haven't changed the speed yet now we are going to change the speed individually again this clip was shot at 60p so we are going to go one by one and change the speed to 40% not this one but this one again custom 40% and when he lands, we said we wanted to go to 40%. Here we go. Now I'm going to play back the clip for you. So that looks much better. The transitions here are a lot more smooth. One reason behind that is if you look clearly at the top, there are those gray areas and you can actually change the length of those. Basically, those are 
uh, transition from one speed to the other. So let's say from the 100% speed to the slow speed of 40%, everything that's in, in the gray area is a transition period to go from one speed to the other. So if I pull that one closer, I can pull them all the way like this, and there is no more transition. Whereas now, if I pull them back all the way, it means the clip will transition all the way to 40% super smoothly, and you can't even tell there is a transition. Final Cut is for sure lacking control of keyframes, but those tools are super easy to use. Let's play it back one more time to show you how smooth it is. Here you go, now you can master the speed of the clips and now you can go as crazy as you want. The limit is just your imagination. We are going to do a few more things. Uh, let's stay on this last clip here. One thing that's happening, see, if you listen when I play it back. On the slow motion parts, you can hear the sound is not that good. So that's basically Final Cut trying to preserve the pitch of your audio. And to change that, if you go directly at the bottom, untick the preserve pitch. Now the pitch of the clip is going to change depending on the speed. So you've got a much cleaner audio. Obviously it highly depends on what you're trying to achieve. I much prefer not preserving the pitch. So that's one thing. One small issue you can encounter at this stage is you didn't do the cut exactly where you wanted. So let's take for example here that first cut I want to start as soon as it touches the top bar on that obstacle. We are kind of stuck because if I'm moving this I'm just going to change the speed of that part of the clip. But there is one way of doing so, and this is by double clicking on the gray area around the speed cut you've done. So if I double click here, I can either untick the box and remove totally the transition, but I can as well edit where that cut is. And, and this is a very useful and hidden tool because now this small icon shows up and I can adjust exactly where that cut is. So we want the cut to be when it touches the top bar, I'm going to move it to the right. Top viewer here is showing you where the cut is happening. And now if I play it back, much better. So it's a very, very useful tool. And I think that if you have one thing to remember from that tutorial is actually how to show up these tools. And obviously everything I showed you works as well the opposite way. So here is the shot that was shot in 2K at 240 frames per second. So here I'm going to use a shift B as well to control the speed. Here the slow motion is considered as normal. So that's why the shooting rate is very important to notice. That's why it's important to understand the nuance between the shooting rate at 240 frames and actual playback speed, which is the video frame right here. So basically here, what we can do is actually make this part faster and we could use the shortcut for example here and press play now i'm going to show you something else for example with this clip of loki doing uh, i think that was a 1080 attempt yeah yeah it was really not far off. too bad i wish we had this one for the example but anyway our video frame rate 23.98 our shooting rate was 120 for example i wish i shot this one at 240. i think that's really cool when it spins here i want to slow it down even more uh, we want to slow down this part in between and let's say we want to slow that part down even slower i'm going to play it back and I don't know if you can see what's happening here, but since we were already playing that clip back at 24p, we are missing frames and that gives that very jumpy look as soon as we go slow. So basically what Final Cut is doing is playing each frame twice as long as they should and we can go even slower. So I'm going to slow it down to, uh, let's go crazy all the way to 10%. And now let's play it back just to see. So now each frame is playing for 10 frames and this is exactly what you're seeing. So 10, 10 frames is roughly half a second on my 24 timeline. So this looks terrible. So we are going to bring it down to 25% and I'm going to show you something really cool. What you want to do is press on this small icon again. Let's go into the retiming option. We want to go into video quality and we are going to use either frame blending or optical flow and I'm going to show you both. So the first is frame blending. So basically what Final Cut Pro 
Arrow is doing right now is for each of those frames, Final Cut is putting a transition in between each of them to make it look like a bit more smooth. So it's a bit better than before, as you can see, there is kind of a, of a fade transition in between each frame, so I'll play it back one more time. This is not ideal, uh, this is just a bit better. But now, uh, let's play around and use the second option that we have, which is optical flow. So that one is going to take a bit longer to render. So now let's have a look and play it back from the beginning. a lot better and what actually happened is Final Cut used an algorithm to recreate the missing frames. It's still trying to play back a 24 frames per second but instead of having just a few frames to work with the algorithm is going to try to extrapolate each frame to the next one and create frames in between to produce that very smooth look so this technique works especially when we have a clean background and i'm going to tell you i cheated a little bit i knew how it would look like before basically here i chose to ramp the speed and to have this slow motion exactly when Loki is in between all the details of the rails. So to make it easier for Final Cut to create those middle frames, I've chosen exactly when uh, Loki was in between all the lines here and the crane. That's why my result is pretty good. If we were to zoom in, if you look at the edges, I'm actually very impressed because it's really clean even though here, is in front of a pretty tricky structure to recreate for, for the software. So that's what you would do. Uh, obviously, that technique has some limitation. If I go back to this clip with the GoPro and I'm going to cut when all those drops are going to the camera and let's play it back. So this is exactly what I wanted to show you and those are the limitation of the optical flow here when you've got some very, very complex things happening on the screen, which happens to be all these wire drops that looks terrible. The algorithm is not capable of reproducing images here. So now I'm going to show you another few options and presets you have within Final Cut uh, very quickly. You can directly do some kind of speed ramps directly into Final Cut. So from 0% as uh, it says, it's going to create those cuts for you already starting from 0% all the way to 100%. Another option you have here is to hold the frame. So let's say I want to hold the frame when Loki is here all the way at the top. I can press Shift H or directly click here. And basically now I've got a freeze frame in my clip without cutting the clip. So that's one way of doing it. Another important tool you may end up using a lot is the reverse function. So if you click here on reverse clip, now the clip is going to play back reverse. So that's very useful. Final Cut as well as some and the tool you can use here. And I really like, for example, creating boomerangs uh, that I create myself to post on Insta stories. And uh, if you use the rewind function, it's going to create for you a rewind in the middle of your clip without doing any cut. So that's one way of doing it. Unfortunately, when you double click on those, you don't have the option to put a speed transition. So the transition is very sharp. So I think that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed that video and you learned something. If you did learn something from that video, please leave a thumb up and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any questions about speed ramping, speed controlling in Final Cut Pro, please leave your question down below and I'll see you very soon. Cheers.